Hey guys, so I wasn't going to preview another version of Linux Mint until quite some time, but you guys specifically demanded that I had a run through on the KDE release of Linux Mint 17. So, um, here we go. Uh, so, um, here I've got up the, uh, the old press release and, um, says some important stuff in the notes. This is the 32-bit that I'm running, but um, as far as I'm aware, it's the 64-bit is, you know, exactly the same. Uh, system requirements, um, 2 gig of RAM. So the requirements do seem to go up over time. Uh, this, you know, if you have 2 gigs requirement, that's actually quite high for Linux distribution. Haven't seen one that high for quite some time. Um, but then again, it might not, you know, it might, it might just be because I uh, haven't really been checking because my computer's quite fast. Anyway, uh, the press release is all pretty standard stuff. There's, uh, we can get straight onto the distribution, so I'll just bring it up here, and I've booted directly into the uh, yeah the 32-bit ISO. So uh, you can start in compatibility mode, do the integrity check, boot from the local device, memory test, yada yada, all the same stuff that you get with all the other Linux Mint distributions. But let's crack on and start uh, start with the live CD. So uh, again, you've always got to hand it to distributions that uh, send out like in it, you know, that uh, that put you through the live CD experience first before even asking to install, um, because it's a really good way to make sure that your that the um, Linux distribution is compatible with your hardware. And I've got to say now, in the past couple of years or so, I don't even think I've actually found a computer that's not capable of running a Linux distribution right out of the box. Um, some of you guys have mentioned down in the comments section below um, of various cases where that's happened, but I gotta say, out of the half dozen so installs I've done over the past couple of years on, on half dozen or so various different machines, I don't think I've ever come up with a problem, or at least not a problem that's not easily Googleable and fixable. Okay, so Standard KDE stuff. Um, now, uh, I don't know how many of you guys will know this, but the very first version of Linux Mint actually shipped with KDE as the default environment. Um, they were looking for something user-friendly, straightforward, but also something conservative, reserved, and a little bit more traditional. And KDE at the time fitted that profile. And then I think it was version 2.0 where they actually decided that um, GNOME was the direction they wanted to go into. Um, because there are a lot of uh, Linux people that are very familiar with GNOME as well that might feel a little bit like a fish out of water with KDE. Now KDE, I've always known KDE for it to have very nice out of the box aesthetics. By the way, that um, that flickering into the black uh, you saw just a while ago, that's part of me running it on a virtual machine as I'm doing it now, not part of the distribution itself. Um, okay, so as you can see, automatically connected to the network, yada yada, all that kind of stuff. Now. I remember the KDE version of Mint actually came with uh, a panel menu. Uh, this was when it was shipped with KDE 3. Now that KDE 4 is well established as a distribution, um, it, that came with a panel as default. This is the panel. So there used to be like a Mint panel. There used to be a Mint menu that look, actually looked quite a lot like this that was shipped with earlier versions of Mint. But now what it looks like to me is that Mint... Um, with KDE is uh, a lot less modified than it used to be. There's a lot less out of the box changing around. Uh, I don't know whether or not that's just a change in where the developers are placed, whether or not it's that KDE as a desktop environment is more in line with what Linux Mint is as a philosophy anyway, so they have to change it less. And I certainly think that's part of it because uh, the traditional KDE, the regular old KDE for desktop layout is very similar to the uh, KDE um, Linux Mint 1.0 layout, so um, so there's that. Uh, so it comes with all the old, same old KDE stuff, all the same uh, out of the box Linux Mint stuff as well. What's in the old multimedia? VLC media player comes out of the box. Again, that's a very popular media player, and if I'm not mistaken, does use the Qt libraries as of a couple of years ago. And it comes with the uh, you know the bundled KDE applications, uh, which. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing more Qt-based applications in um, in GNOME distributions, actually, because KDE and the Qt libraries are becoming a lot more modular. They're becoming uh, designed so that you can deploy them into a lot more unusual um, circumstances and distributions, and so that like you can have very lightweight Qt-based distributions 
uh, because you you don't need this web of libraries that you might needed to have once upon a time. You can actually pick out parts of libraries that work independently, or at least that's how I've understood it. Um, so what are the setting office utils that come with it? Yeah, so you, it comes with the LibreOffice. It comes with Kmail, um, which is interesting and in, in and of itself. Uh, Kmail, i got to admit, I was expecting Thunderbird there. What browser does it come with? It comes with Firefox. Um, that's pretty standard. Does it come? No, it doesn't come with Conqueror. Just the Firefox. Okay. Yeah, I've got to admit, that's and KTorrent. So it comes with a combination of some well knowns like uh, like the Office package, but it also comes with a lot of KDE specifics as well. Kind of like a bit of bit of both thrown in there, kind of a halfway point. Because I know some KDE based distributions, they just go uh, they go either all out for the KDE environment with all the KDE apps that go along with it, or they just throw out the KDE apps and they bring in your Firefoxes, your LibreOffice, your GIMPs, your uh, Scribus and Caden Live. Although the last two there actually are based on Qt libraries natively as well. Um, so um, and I'm actually actually saying that and I'm. Possibly a little half expecting, maybe, to see Caden Live in there. It's not in there, is it? It's not under the uh, the old multimedia section. Just because KDE or Caden Live, the video editor that's based on the Qt libraries, which is very, very good, if not just a little bit too buggy for me to be completely satisfied with. Um, yeah, kind of, kind of semi expected that to be in in the release because it fits in nicely with the Qt environment. And video editing is something that more and more people are doing. I don't know. Actually, let me know in the comment section below. Would you be interested in seeing Caden Live being bundled with KDE-focused distributions? I personally would, but then again, look at me. I'm on the friggin' YouTube, aren't I? Okay, so we're all connected on the internet, all good and ready to go. It isn't asking me to mess around with codecs or download up. So this is a different install. Obviously, it's a different installer. No, I wasn't expecting that actually. I was expecting a pretty much a carbon copy installation process. Yeah. Oh, it's picked up United Kingdom right off the bat actually. I'll give it kudos for that one. Did I even select anything that indicated I was in the United Kingdom? I don't think I, I don't know. Was that an auto detect? If that is, that's a very clever. You picked me up in London. So, um,. Yeah, and that's that's basically for those of you who aren't from the UK. This is a uh, layout of a UK-based keyboard. Note the quote double quotation marks there above the uh, the shift to, and the at sign being right down there. I know that on Macs and on US keyboards, those two buttons are actually uh, they switch places. Um, other than that, like that's the thing. Like a lot of people in the UK fail to calibrate the keyboard to the UK specific because US keyboards are different and then a lot of people get really flustered when they go to press shift and two to get the double quotation marks because that's what it looks like on the physical keyboard but because the keyboard's set to the US keyboard that it actually comes up with the at sign oh my lord that blows a lot of people's minds more than it really should do they go ah I pressed the button <laughs> true story okay anyway um so yeah, this is a different installer, but I'm gliding through it. I'm not even thinking twice about uh, any of these things. My name, username, sure, password, yeah, sure. Login automatically, and you can uh, carry on. Uh, by the way, guys, just for those of you that are interested, although I'm probably sure each and every one of you have your own opinion on this one, when I do log in automatically, that just makes the virtual machine demonstration process a little easier for me. Um, I don't personally recommend, you know, not having a login for your desktop PC. Even by and large, these logins aren't the most difficult in the world to crack. Um, it does stop. I don't know. It's just like an added layer of protection that really isn't that much... Uh, of, a, of a hassle, if you think about it, um, really. I know a lot of people that are really adamant about keeping passwords on and screen locking after one minute of inactivity and stuff like that, but um, I don't know. I uh, I mean, I take it seriously, but I certainly don't take it some seriously as some of the people I know who work in uh, digital security for a living. Those guys are paranoid. Um... Can we quick click next? Is there more that we can do here? 
Um, so yeah, but like I say as well, in the usual caveat to these things is that sometimes these are both faster and slower distributions when I'm demonstrating them to you than when um, I'm perhaps installing via a CD. And that's because it gets faster disk access because it's accessing a CD directly from the hard disk, but it's also a bit slower because it's running inside a virtual machine. So it's not using all of my system resources. So this is running like on, on one gig of RAM and eight gigs hard disk space and one three gig processor or something along those lines, one core. Um, so, okay, so we are going to boot in our freshly installed Linux Mint 17 KDE installation. And I've got to say through the install process and the live CD, this is once again, a pretty unremarkable Linux Mint distribution. But in these cases, that's only to its credit. Uh, a an operating system isn't meant to take center stage. It's very much meant to to be the stage itself in which the spectacles sit and reside on top of. And um, yeah, like with Linux Mint, you know, you you know what you're getting. You're getting a, a straightforward, um, works out of the box kind of operating system that's really designed around common usability. And this is no exception. If you want a KDE flavor of quite frankly one of the best Linux distributions out there. This is exactly what you'll get. Uh, it comes with uh, a very vanilla uh, installation of KDE from what I have seen, uh, but just with the Linux Mint tools on top. So you've got uh, everything here as well. And it comes with working flash and all this kind of stuff straight out of the box and some pretty great community support as well. So like I say, just about what I said about any other Linux Mint distribution recently applies here just with KDE instead of whatever desktop environment I'm currently talking about at the time. Um, yeah, Linux Mint is a pretty conservative and reserved and altogether distribution. Like it knows what it's doing with itself. It's, you know, it's pretty well organized. And out of that does come stability, user friendliness, and a distribution that works well out of the box, something that you could perhaps uh, introduce other people to like Linux through this distribution, and they probably wouldn't have too much in the way of problems. And if Linux uh, is going to make it into the desktop market, which I do believe it it will do i think windows is is really just straining itself at this point now and i think it's 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 reached its apex um if not surpassed it and um and people are going to need to jump ship somewhere and i think ubuntu is just a little bit too on the edge it's a little bit unreliable it's not as stable as linux mint linux mint take a few extra precautions that ubuntu doesn't and um and i think linux mint it's again it's it's a little more humble it's a little more it knows what it is and it knows what it's supposed to be and it knows that an operating system isn't supposed to take center stage but supposed to be a reliable foundation for software that runs on top of it and because it knows that and because it treats that particular duty with a great deal of respect and reverence um, you get a top quality distribution out of it so that's about it for me today thank you very 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 much for watching and as usual if you would like me to include uh, any other distribution in a future run through then feel free to let me know down in the comment section below but also when i do these run throughs is there any particular aspect of a distribution you would like me to actually take a look at i have developed now a reasonably straightforward and regular process in reviewing distributions but is there anything else you would like to see included in this now i usually just run through um the live cd bundled applications uh, the install process the philosophy i'll probably run through the press release as well but if there is anything else you'd like me to check out um in in sort of like as a regular segment to all of these walkthroughs then again please let me know that down in the comments section below i'm always interested in how i can make these videos a little bit better for you guys so that's about it for me today thank you very much for watching and uh, until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome take care now